right here at Buzz TV. It's a fun day for us, not just a fun day. I mean something really, really fun and, and close to my heart. We're here with Matt Zane, and Matt had a great project he just did, the Altered Noise, the DV Carlos story. Now, for you guys, before we get started, this is a true rock and roll story. So you got to watch it. But if you ever had rock and roll dreams, this guy had them, and this guy made them and lived them. How you doing, Matt? I'm good, Brad. It's good to see you. It's been a little bit. You know, I saw the documentary, and it just really blew me away. Um, now, of course, you know, you guys might know or might not know, Matt and I do go back. We have history. Same thing with Dirt. Um, so when we lost him, it's something that just, like everyone else, w was beyond a shock. This was more than a tribute. You really nailed it. So let's just talk about it, Matt. How'd you, you know, end up getting this thing put together so quick? And obviously you had tons of footage, but mentally, how were you able to do this thing? Because, you know, Dirt's family. Yeah, you know, <laughs> a lot of people don't realize this, but I, I talked about it at his memorial that we just had a couple of weeks ago. The plan was always to do a film about Dirk, AKA D.B. Karloff, when he passed. We talked about this through the entire time that we knew each other. It was an ongoing morbid joke that I was gonna live longer than he was. And we discussed his memorial and what it would entail. And during one of the final conversations that we had, which happened to be when we were on the road opening for Doyle of the Misfits, that we were going to ultimately add a movie in tribute uh, to his life. And it was decided upon that I was going to do this, obviously because of my music video background, but also because I had the most footage of him in the archives. And whether or not he really meant it or we were joking about it, I felt that it had to be done because it was real conversations that we had over the course of 17 years of knowing each other. When he finally when the time came finally to do it, it was just, for me, more of a healing process than, than anything else. It allowed me to be able to work on one more project with him. And so every night that I sat here, actually, at the Lord's Zane Productions Command Center that you're seeing right now, I would get done with my, my usual music video work or whatever work I had, photo work, and then I would spend all night editing and working on stuff uh, that related to the, to the project. And that's how I was able to get it done uh, in about four months. And the, the flip side of that was you have to remember that I lived it all. So I kind of knew where things were uh, as far as footage and how it kind of connected together. And, and it turned out to be, you know, again, great. Guys, there's links right down here in the description, and I'm, I'm flashing one right now. So get it, uh, it's on YouTube, it's free, which rarely things are these days, so again, kudos to you with that one. Um, and, you know, I don't really know what more to say other than you just nailed it. You know, the band did some amazing things, and, you know, again, touching on it, this guy has a true rock and roll story. I kind of feel a little jaded just because I grew up in Southern California. I was a kid there from the 60s on up. So certain things were normal to me, going to clubs, doing this, just being around music. But from where Dirt came from, to have those dreams and to, you know, bet on yourself and just go. And then not only, you know, chase the dream, but catch it and live the dream. That is just an amazing story right there in itself. Yeah, I mean, one of the things about the movie is is that obviously it was made for his friends and family and fans first and foremost. But I also wanted to make a movie that was going to be enjoyable for anybody to watch, regardless of if you knew who he was, knew who the band was or not. And it is really an amazing rock and roll dream story because it's about a kid that actually grew up in the cornfields of Indiana. I mean, this guy, Dirt, lived in a small town. He it talks about in the movie about how he came out to LA with $500 in his pocket. And it's just an amazing thing that he was able to not only get out here and achieve it, but in the short time span that he did it, it only took eight months for, before he was literally in Europe touring on a double-decker tour bus, 
playing all over the world. 48 states, 17 countries, huge studios. And the greatest part about the story is, is the underlying subplot of his love for Kiss. A lot of people can identify with that. And one of the main things when Dave Navarro, who's also in the film, watched this movie, thought was, oh my God, that was an amazing side story about Kiss and how ultimately Dirk got to meet his main hero in such an amazing and unique way, an experience that in a, in a, in a, back then you couldn't buy. Now you can buy it with meat and grease. But, uh, you know, and for, I don't want to give too much away in the movie, but it really, uh, all of it really is just a, an amazing story that you hear about, but you don't really get to, to see come true in a, lot of, in a lot of different times in life. Exactly. And, you know, he was, he expanded in so many ways, you know, not just with the Society One stuff. Then he hooked up and he was doing some work with uh, a three-headed snake. Um, then on top of his tattoo career, which in itself is, he has a name with, with the people he's done. And again, you guys really need to watch this movie. But it was just a great thing. And to me, it was more than just a tribute. Um, anyone could make a tribute film and just sing the praises of someone. But you really got into the fun stuff, the real stuff with them. And if you didn't know about this guy, you learned a great deal about him. And the sad thing is, it makes you wish that you could spend more time with them. Um, you know, I did. We, had very, we didn't have a lot of encounters. Most of them were pretty brief just because state to state thing. But um, always was the friendliest guy around. Uh, you know, I could never think of anything bad to say about him because he was that great of a guy. There's so few people in this world that are like that. Um, and you were lucky enough to play with them for many, many years. Stat yeah, you know, it's the, the great thing about the movies like you, that you talked about is, is that a lot of people also just think that it, it, the story begins and kind of ends with Society One, and it really doesn't. He had a, a much bigger life than I personally believe he even thought that he'd have. He was a tattoo artist and ultimately be became somewhat of a legend locally, but ended up actually getting even beyond that. I mean, he ended up tattooing Britney Spears and was on TNC and all these big paparazzi shows. Uh, he ended up tattooing Kelly Clarkson, I think multiple times, Steve-O, a lot of different stars. I mean, I wasn't even aware of everybody that he, that he tattooed. And then in addition to that, t tattooing naked chicks. And honestly, I think that's like the first time that's ever happened. And it didn't stop there. He ultimately ended up in Sin's project, a Sin from former ministry guitar player, Three-Headed Snake, and ended up doing some pretty big things with them that unfortunately got cut short because of the pandemic, but was even able to get back over to Europe and play in front of tens and thousands of people in that band as well. So, I mean, it really was just the, the arc of the story and all the little intricacies of it and the way that he went through the, his entire life being loved and never really stopping the party is just something to behold. And it's just, uh, again, it's uh, very few people get to experience life uh, to that extent that he did. And I really wanted to make sure that that could come through. Uh, so we could all remember him and remember his essence, but also for the people that didn't know him for future generations who continue to be a fan of society and want to find out about us, uh, have something to go back and look at the band, band's history because he was in the band for 15 years. You know, and, and Speaking of Society One, um, you guys have this uh, a few dates coming up to, with this uh, Static X tour that's coming. Um, how's that going to be? That's going to be a little tough, obviously. You, you know, finding someone to replace him, and those are pretty big shoes. Um, you know, you want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, you know, it, it is. People have been asking me that question, but here's the thing that a lot of people don't realize. And I... I, uh, I went public with it in a press release, but the specific press release didn't get picked up for whatever reason. Um, so, I mean, I'm going to be talking about it starting today with you and a lot of people in regards to that. When Dirt was in Three-Headed Snake, he decided to move back to Indiana. So he had Three-Headed Snake going on. He had his other band, Hate Song. And he moved back to Indiana, uh, and he left. Uh, it kind of put me in a position where I was left without without a band, and I had to put together a new lineup. And believe it or not, the guy that's playing bass for me right now, Jimmy Minge, called Dirt and said, hey, man, 
would it be cool with you if I filled your shoes? And Dirt and him already knew each other and were friends, and Dirt actually gave Jimmy his blessing and discussed actually working with me a little bit and what he could do to, to uh, fit into the situation to the best of his ability and play Dirt's parts. And then that's how the bridge was made between Dirt and Jimmy. So the guy I have playing with me now that's going out on the road, Jimmy, is the guy that Dirt himself chose to replace him. So for me personally, it means a lot to be able to have somebody like that in the band as well as somebody to move forward, to have somebody that knew Dirt and that Dirt and him specifically spoke and said, hey man, you know, you could, you could pick up this torch and, and go with it. So I'm, I'm incredibly grateful that that happened. And you don't really get that, that, that to happen a lot in, in life. So that's what's happening. Jimmy's uh, filling Dirt's shoes and they knew each other, and it's a, like I said, it's just I'm, I'm just happy that Dirk gave the thumbs up for that to happen. You know, that's really cool. And fortunately for us, we're going to uh, pop on over to Rio, uh, up to Reno and then catch you well, guys. I got to get approved. You, you are approved, but I got to get approval on the specific show still. Perfect. Well, yeah. we're going to get approval, so it's not official yet, wink, wink, but we're going to get it approved. And we're gonna be up there and we'll catch some society while we'll drop the 360 package, do some really fun stuff. Um, now, are there any plans to do anything else? Uh, maybe really have some kind of package thing of Old Society One with Dirt or um, you gonna do any kind of memorial on the road with these shows? Uh, you know, I So basically what we did, we did the big memorial in Hollywood about two weeks ago, maybe three weeks ago, well, and that's, that's posted online for anybody to see. Obviously the movie's out there for free. Uh, we're talking to a film festival right now about possibly picking that up. Uh, like I said, press starts today about that movie as well as the tour. As far as future material is concerned, the big tribute really to Dirt is going to be the release of Black Level 6. It was the last album that him and I recorded together and wrote together. Uh, he has released his EP with Three Headed Snake, but that's out. His last album with, with Hate Song is out. The last album that we have left is Black Level 6. So that is coming out prior to the tour, uh, prior to February 19th of next year, probably in the beginning of February. Uh, in addition to that, I went back into the sessions and found a song that wasn't that didn't make the initial record. We just got done going into the studio and working on that and getting that mixed for the first single. That song is going to be coming out first. That is the additional track that's going on Black Level 6 that Dirk played on. And then what we did in addition to that is, is I went back into some even older Pro Tools sessions for other albums and I found a couple more tracks that are going to be the bonus tracks on Black Level 6, but only for physical copies that also have Dirk playing on them. As far as what we're doing on the road, I mean, we're going to obviously dedicate the altered noise to him every night. We're going to be playing it as the second song uh, in the evening uh, live. Um, you know, we're probably going to have uh, posters of Dirt for the movie The Altered Noise available uh, at the merch booth. And then, you know, basically just playing songs that he played with me every night for 15 years all around the world. And I, I really can't think of uh, more to do uh, than, than that. The new album the dedication and the movie and um and also finding you know tracks uh for every record I, I hope to find one or two more in the vaults to to just kind of put out there perfect so matt closing this out i figure the most important question i could ask right now would be what did we leave out that they need to know about the altered noise uh i you know I, you cover a lot of great stuff i mean it's it's a it's a great watch it's a great movie like you said it's free i wanted to make it available for all time for people to watch i just you know my hopes it hope is is that uh, people uh just they they get to know them and they and they they keep them alive i mean look i uh i love what static x is doing for wayne i love what they've done for wayne i've loved that i've been involved and i continue to be involved with that they do an amazing tribute every time they go out on the road. It's unbelievable what they do. I don't really have as much uh, financial uh, means to be able to make it as big as them, but I'm doing the best that I can in terms of dirt. This thing is, is the, the album that he played on, uh, obviously the album dedicated to him. And that's pretty much it. As far as uh, things that we missed, I mean, Brad, you forgot that you actually made a small cameo in the movie. Yeah, but I'm not worried about plugging me so much. 
Um, <laughs> you know, uh, we also yeah, had. So Brad, I mean, I know, um, I, I know you're not, but Dirk, Dirk really liked you, and you know, he was always really grateful for every time that you sent Buzz TV out. That time in the whiskey with your with your LA branch that you came out to cover that show, and then you came to Vegas, and and if you remember correctly, we all hung out. At the uh, the, the unfortunate uh, reunion that Dave Lee Roth was supposed to have with this Eden Smile Band. Oh no, we I were all there together. Dude, as well. I remember that. It, you know, you guys don't know, but there was a supposed David Lee Roth re, uh, reunion, small club in Hollywood, which turned out to be a line a mile long around the block. Um, we were there to cover it, and yeah. as we're there, we bump into Matt and Dirt. And it's like, hey, what are you guys? So oh, we're here. And we're no, come with us. And we just all jumped in together. Next thing I know, Matt's backstage somewhere, hanging with the band. Um, Dirt and I are out front. I hear Steve I's guitar tone, and then the fire department comes in and shuts everything down before anything played. But that's what I mean. It's just everyone has some kind of story with Dirt, besides just you know a music thing. And that's what made things so special, and that's why he's missed so much, um, because he's such a great guy. So, Matt, I'm going to close this out with something we always do. We did it with you guys before. We're going to do it again now, and we'll do it again when we catch you in Reno. Uh, we're going to play Roll the Bones. We have a few questions changed, and I have 30 pre-selected questions. I generally have a 30-sided dice, but since you can't roll it, pick a number between 1 and 30. Seven. Seven. Okay, this will be fun. Drug of choice. Now, mind you, we've played this many times, and people's eyes go like that. A drug necessarily does not mean a chemical substance. You get an, if I get a new guitar, that's my drug of choice for about two weeks because I'm not touching anything else. Um, so, drug of choice, Matt. I actually loved doing uh, acid back in the day. Okay, so Matt's drug of choice is acid. Don't touch any of that shit going around today. Who knows what... what oh, wait, hold on a second. I'm going to have to send you a care package. A buddy of mine hooked me up with these, and I haven't tested them yet. But I don't know if you can see that. These are Wonderland gummies, mushroom gummies. So I'll have to send you a care package of those one day um, because I think they're pretty cool. That was funny. I like that. So, Matt, pick a number for me between 1 and 30. I'll play this fun little game, too. Uh, okay, uh, nine. Nine. What freaks me out? Let's see. What does... Crackheads. Crackheads and bums freak me out because these days they are just completely out of their minds. And when I, I just steer clear of them, um, generally. I like clowns, so clowns, you know, a lot of people say clowns. I like clowns, so clowns don't freak me out. Um, or maybe crappy bands. That freaks me out, too. <laughs> hey, Matt, I got to run. I know you got to run. We have a bunch of stuff to do. I appreciate you taking the time and talking to us. Again, the altered noise. I love this thing. You guys are going to love it. It's a great watch, and the best thing is you can watch it on your phone or your computer anytime, anywhere on a tablet. It's free. The links are down here again. It's flashing in your face. Make sure you watch that. It's a truly great watch. If you ever had any kind of rock and roll dreams or wondered if they are true, this is a story of how they came true, how someone lived them beyond their wildest expectations. It was truly a great watch, Matt. I appreciate you stopping by and talking to us. Thank you so much, Brad. You've always been really great and awesome and cool and a supporter of the band. So once again, uh, really appreciate it. And uh, thanks for getting the word out there about the movie. Oh, um, you know, we loved it. And you guys, definitely hit that link. Check it out. You're going to love it. And down the road, when we get this thing all locked in and confirmed, we'll get out there and catch the guys up in Reno. So you're going to see them on the big stage doing some fun stuff. And again, Society One's still kicking. They're making some great music. Some new albums are coming out. You're still going to get to hear one more, one more CD with Dirt. And you know what? That's not going to be the last album these guys are doing. Matt is not a guy that gives up. No matter how much people want to kick him and try to keep him down, you don't keep the good down. You just make them hungrier and stronger. Matt, I appreciate everything we're going to run. For myself, for Thanks, Matt, Brad. for Matt saying... The Altered Noise, Society One, and Buzz TV. We're out of here, guys. See ya.